On the next episode of Painting and Travel, Roger and Sarah Batsimer visit a small town in the panhandle of Florida where they explore the coastal marshes, tidal creeks, and one of Florida's most beautiful landmarks, the St. Mark's Lighthouse. Lighthouses have always been a favorite subject for artists to paint, including myself. And today, Sarah and I have traveled in our small camper from our studio in Clearwater to leave that heavily populated area behind and spend some time in an area that has not been totally overrun with high-rise condominiums and franchises. There's 30 lighthouses in Florida, and here we are at St. Mark's. It's up near the Panhandle, and this is by far the most beautiful lighthouse of all the lighthouses in Florida. I used it on the cover of one of my lighthouse books. It's one of our favorite spots. It's just a picture-perfect lighthouse. It's remote enough in this beautiful park where it's not crowded, not congested. Sort of have the whole place to ourselves today. So I'm gonna set up my easel here right on the beach and we'll do a small painting. All the beautiful birds in the background just couldn't be nicer. I try to keep my supplies to a minimum while I'm out in the field painting. I carry this little board here that I can attach to my easel and it has a glass palette on there. So when I finish with my paints, I can easily scrape my paints off. And here's my little masonite board. Well, as I finish setting up my easel and putting out some paints here, I think we'll take a little tour around the lighthouse, the park, and the town of St. Mark's, which is not too far from here. St. Mark's is located on the west coast of Florida near the Panhandle, and with a population of only 300, it's one of the few remaining areas with an unhurried lifestyle that's all but disappeared elsewhere in the state. The town maintains itself with a few small family-owned restaurants and hundreds of boats, most likely owned by weekenders from Tallahassee who enjoy fishing. That seems to be the major activity here. Some commercial fishing exists, like this little bay shrimper, and lots of recreational fishing along the attractive shoreline, complete with a few mosquitoes. Shopping in St. Mark's takes place in the general store that's been in business since 1935. Here, you might not be able to find exactly what you want, but you'll always get what you need. Hi, Miss Joy. Back already to eat some bread. <laughs> Miss Joy has run the store since 1965. She sells canned food, frozen food, a few fresh vegetables, nuts and bolts, boots and brushes, belts for your Buick and washboards for your wardrobe. She also carries glue, tape, twine, and rope. Everything you need, including soda and soap. There are novels and handkerchiefs, corn huskers lotion, and bread. The counter holds the drill bits and snacks like jawbreakers and jerky and even bubble gum. The best part though is Miss Joy, who'll give you a smile in this old fashioned store. St. Mark's Wildlife Refuge was established in 1931. After entering the park at the Visitor Center, it's a seven mile drive through the forests, hammocks, and marshes to the lighthouse. Levees and bridges and culverts were constructed to create a huge network of freshwater pools and then set aside for the thousands of waterfowl. Approaching the lighthouse, visitors can catch a glimpse of many birds that migrate through the area. 
On this day, the ducks, shorebirds, and alligators all seem to coexist as the birds fed among the shallows. St. Mark's is a favorite place for bird watchers who can look out from this sturdy tower next to the lighthouse. The lighthouse was built in 1842 and has a 12-foot base of limestone rock. During the Civil War, the Confederates tried to blow it up and seriously damaged the base of the tower, but it survived and stands like a jewel in the midst of the 68,000-acre wildlife refuge. There is a boat ramp close to the lighthouse so you can go fishing or simply motor out for a view. The interior of the lighthouse isn't open to the public except on special occasions, but a trip to this park is certainly worth the drive. So bring your paint box, a camera, a picnic lunch, and have a wonderful day. Well, now I've had a little time to set out all my materials. I have titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, it seems to be a little thin at the moment, the phthalo blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, some sap green, some alizarin crimson. I can add more colors as I go along, but these are some basic colors that I can start with. And I got some water. I have my little atomizer here, which helps to keep these paints wet. I can spray that every once in a while. And I have a set of brushes here. The main thing is I have some good brushes that aren't all beat up. I do have one or two brushes that are beat up. I can use those for things like weeds and that sort of thing, but I want to always have a set of good brushes that come to a nice point. I have a few flat brushes and a few pointed brushes for some detail. I'm going to start off by taking my little digital camera, taking a few pictures of the lighthouse. So later on I'll have some reference back in my studio. This is an essential part of my paint kit. These acrylic paints are going to dry very fast today because it's so warm out here on the beach. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, and just sketch in my composition here. What I like to do is divide this into thirds. This is not always, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it is a good rule to follow if you can, if the composition, if, if the uh, subject can stand it. So this would be like thirds like this, you see? So and I'd like to put my lighthouse over on this third here. So it'll be somewhere in this area. And my horizon line should be up in this area. So I'll get this third division going here. Got these wonderful big trees here. Got the keeper's house back here. Years ago, we could see more of the keeper's house than we can now, but these palm trees have grown up considerably. What I don't want is I don't want the horizon line right in the center of this painting, nor, nor would I want the lighthouse directly in the middle of this painting. This gives it some dynamics that make the composition more interesting to look at. I'll concentrate a little bit more on the proportions of that lighthouse as I go along. But right now I want to just get my basic shapes in. Sometimes you're lucky on a location like this to get this beautiful composition that's already made for me. I really don't have to do anything to change it to improve it. There's just no improvement that can be had in a composition like this. I even have the S-curve that I often speak of is coming around the beach here. Now my next step is to put in the big basic shapes. I generally like to have no more than three big general shapes in my painting. There are a lot of different shapes, smaller shapes within those, but I like to group things into three big areas if I can. can't always do that, but it's good when I can. It simplifies the composition. I'll lose a lot of this drawing as I go along, but that was just to establish where I want to head. I really like to work my lights over my darks. That way I can put these highlights on over these darks, and when the time comes, the highlights will show up much nicer if I have these dark colors underneath. A little more yellow ochre. I even pick up a little bit of red. The same colors can be made with so many different combinations of other colors on the palette. It's not a matter of using 
two colors or three colors to make a particular color. You can have so many variations of all these colors and really come up with the same, same color. It's a matter of just getting to know your colors and experimenting and just having done a lot of it. But at this point, I just want something dark and either warm or, or warm or cool. And when I look at this composition in here, what I see is one big basic shape. I don't see separate trees anymore. All these become one shape. And that's what I'm after right now, is to get some big basic shapes going. Maybe the sky, this area is another shape, and maybe the sand, the beach is a third shape. Keep my composition nice and simple that way. A little bit of titanium white, cerulean blue, and I'll go ahead and I'll put this sky in. This is all about getting the big shapes in quickly and covering the entire canvas. All the colors relate so importantly to one another that I like to cover my entire canvas before I make, start making too many adjustments because one color affects the other to such a degree that if I think this color is just right, then when I add another color down here, it really changes my whole thinking about this color. So they all have to relate very closely. Helps to spray my masonite board every once in a while too. Not to keep this paint wet, but it makes the paint that I'm applying flow a little bit easier. Acrylics have a real good advantage over oil paints in some respects. And in other respects, they're quite difficult. Uh, many people give up using acrylics, but it just takes a little bit of patience and time to master them. One disadvantage, of course, painting out in plain air like this is that they do dry so very fast. But the advantage to that, of course, is if I don't like this color, I only have to wait for a minute or two and then I can change the color and not get my other colors muddy. As I'm looking at this sky, I notice, and this is more often than not the case, it's very much warmer down here towards the horizon than it is up towards the zenith. It's also darker up towards the zenith. Let me take a little bit of yellow ochre and mix it with my light cerulean blue and just lighten this area up down here near the horizon. This is going to be a sketch, that's all. I'm not going to create a finished painting out here in the field. I'll do that back in the studio, and that's one reason I took a photograph, and I'll take some other photographs before I leave as reference. But being out here gives me a sense of this area more than it would from just taking a photograph, snapping a photograph, and just looking at this for a couple of seconds. Even though I don't get everything right down here or all the details the way I might want them, I do get a sense of it and an appreciation of it that I might not get just by clicking a picture just has its own rewards being out here in the field. I'll block in this lighthouse here. Maybe that little palm tree there. This is not white. This is yellow ochre and white. This needs to be very warm. If it were later in the day, there'd be a shadow on the side of this lighthouse and it would be very cool. Well, I don't want to vary too much from different colors in the painting. They all have to feel like it's part of this one atmosphere here. Seems a little bit too cool. Add a little more yellow ochre. And I'll just paint this in quite quickly. There's a lot of seaweed washed up on the beach. It has some beautiful textures in it. That can help me with this little S pattern. I want to bring this layer down here of these of this foliage here in the foreground to differentiate that from the foliage in the background. There's some lighter greens back there. I think maybe it's new growth. This is spring. So there's some new nice light colors of green back in here. I brought a fan brush with me. This is not a new fan brush. I have a new fan brush and an old one. I'm going to use this old one, 
Generally, I like to use brushes that are in very good shape, but occasionally an old beat up brush will do the trick a little bit better than a new brush. When I put in weeds like this with a fan brush, I generally keep my brush straight out from the canvas like this instead of at an angle. These are a little bit darker than what I see them here, but I'm going to put my lights over my darks. Well, it's starting to take shape a little bit. Add these trees in here. There's some beautiful negative areas in these trees too, which I'll add. And by negative areas, I mean the space between the trees, those little sky holes, as I sometimes call them. So I'll add those in in a little while. They add quite a bit of interest and beauty. Sometimes my original intent is lost when doing a painting, or at least part of the intent in that S curve. I think it's still in here, but I've sort of lost that a bit. It doesn't really matter. This is just a process of building a painting, and it changes all the time as it goes along. It's beautiful blue water out there. I think I'll exaggerate that even more than it is. All those trees that are far away over there, all those distant trees, have a lot of atmosphere between them and myself. So I want to try and reflect that in my painting. So I'm going to lighten these up, put some blue in them. They're not nearly as green, this horizon, all these trees back here are not nearly as green as all this foliage up here. Just a matter of having all that atmosphere in between me and those trees. These trees over here seem to be so far distant. Have them a little large. So I'm gonna put a little more sky in here to make those distant trees just a sliver on the horizon. I can see a little bit of beach way, way over there. So just as a note to myself, which a lot of what this painting is out here in the field, little notes to myself, I just add that little sliver of beach in there to remind me that it's there. Ultramarine blue, burnt umber, make a pretty nice dark for this lantern room up here. I'm not going to be able to get the drawing totally accurate out here. It's just too much to ask in the field. Back in the studio is where I can concentrate on all these details. But I do want to get the proportions fairly accurate, and these proportions really do have to be accurate. If you're a little bit off, people notice, people will know that something is wrong. They may not be able to tell exactly what it is, but if Proportions aren't right on a lighthouse like this. Just in people's minds, they'll say, something not, not quite right about that. It just doesn't look quite right. Attention to detail on this is very important. Of course, my photograph will help me to get that straight as well if I don't accomplish it out here in the field. Here's that nice shadow coming across the top of the lighthouse now. That lantern room looks too small, so I'll make it a little bit larger. Again, that's the advantage of acrylic paints. You can just go right over this without getting any of my other colors muddy. Right now, I'm not going to worry about the lens inside the lantern room and all those details. I'll address those at a later time. I have a small pointed brush here. This will help me put in a few of these details. Here I'll put in some of these negative areas. These are so much fun to put in, the negative areas. Rather than painting the palm tree, what I'm going to do is paint around the palm tree. It's almost like sculpting with a rock. You take a solid rock and you find what's in the rock. Well, here I'm taking the paint. I'm finding the tree by sculpting around it. It's a beautiful red roof on this lighthouse. I'll take a little bit of burnt sienna Maybe just a touch of lizard and crimson. A four note of color like this red will just set it off in a nice way. And as I said earlier, at one point, the keeper's house down below here was more visible until these palm trees grew up some. So I may just uh, indicate a little bit of the keeper's house in here. Kind of a hard edge down here where the roof meets the the wall on the keeper's house. Just for fun, I'm going to pick up some cadmium red light. Just put a little dab out here and 
exaggerate this foreign note of color across the roof. I haven't used phthalo blue until now. I'll take a little phthalo blue and burnt sienna. These two colors make a fantastic green. Very dark, rich green. Now I've maintained these, this basic shape here. I'm working into these areas, but I really haven't lost the sight of these big shapes. I'll make another little note to myself of these negative areas here in the trees. These look like they're random dots, but if they're not placed just right, that's what they'll look like, little random dots. These little sky holes here seem to be placed arbitrarily, but what I'm trying to do is visualize where all these limbs and branches are and then paint between them. That way I can describe the, the limb, the shape of the limb. I'm gonna pick up a little yellow ochre, maybe some burnt sienna, a little bit of everything here. Just make sort of a grayish, light, warm color. Indicate a few more of these weeds, sort of layer in, within layer. Taking a little wash here of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Just gonna go over this, a thin wash. This will also dry quickly, but I wanna tone that down just a little bit and I can put some highlights over this, and they'll show up a little nicer. Here, by toning this down, this lighthouse stands out a little bit more too. That's a good idea. I'm just gonna splatter a little bit of dark colors on here. Get a little bit of pebbles and rocks. That may get lost in this whole process, but I can add these in the studio too. I think I've finished as much as I want to out here in the field. There's a point that comes in a painting where you have to sort of leave nature behind, take it back to the studio, and work as a painting rather than as part of nature. And I think I'm at that point now. I have the information I need in this painting. I've got the composition, I've got the colors, I've got the values. Mainly, we're here today. This is one of the most beautiful spots in all of Florida. I can't think of anywhere I'd rather be than sitting right here on this beach looking at this great lighthouse. So we'll take it back to the studio now and finish it up. Back in our Clearwater, Florida studio now, we had a great trip to St. Mark's. Thanks, Sarah. I'll take this painting and put it on my easel here, and I want to download my photographs from my digital camera and a few more touches on this painting, and I think I'll be finished. Rather than printing out my image to use as reference, I use my computer monitor and a program where I can select the image. I can zoom in here, I can move around, so I can see a lot more detail than on a printed page. I've gone over the sky and gotten rid of all the texture that was in it. I've kept this warm color down here towards the horizon, kept it cooler up here, tried to blend those two there. I wanted to keep this sky simple so it doesn't compete with all this texture down here. I reworked this tree line back here, put more cerulean blue in there, just to be sure it remains far in the background. I've done the same thing with these large trees up here. I've taken a dry brush and scummeled some cerulean blue on there. That gives me a little more atmosphere between these trees here and the bushes in the foreground. I warmed up this seaweed with a little bit of burnt sienna, then I added some strokes of sandy beach in between. I've simplified this beach just a little bit and got rid of some of that texture. Texture that remains was created by that loose brushwork that I did out in the field. These little dots you see on here were created just by flicking some paint on there. But before I did that, I took an atomizer, misted this just a little bit, and then when I flicked the paint on, the edges would just flow a little bit, give me a nice soft edge on those little specks. I finished this area of the lantern room I added a little cerulean blue here. I didn't want that a solid black, just to keep some atmosphere in there. And there was more equipment up there, but I left that out. Wanted to keep that quite simple. I added a hint of this little window here that was boarded up with these shutters. 
and I added a few birds. This red added a nice foreign note of color amongst this all this green. I added the chimneys, gave me a chance to put that little cast shadow on there, and I added a few little branches and twigs coming up from these bushes. A little cerulean blue added here to the roof just to keep that reflection going and to keep an overall cool tone to this painting. I added a bit of green wash down here to the base of the lighthouse because all these trees will reflect on that lighthouse and this helps tie this together a little bit. I worked on these negative areas of, of the palm trees and added a couple more palm trees even though they're quite subtle. This curve brings your eye around to the lighthouse quite nicely and I lighten this area of the beach just to associate it with the lightness of this lighthouse to tie those two together a little bit more. I chose to keep this blue quite intense, just made a nice combination with this bright blue, the white of the lighthouse and this red roof. And a few little details were added down here to the beach. Well, I guess that just about finishes up this painting. All that I need to do now is take a little spray varnish, varnish this, I'll sign it, put it in a frame, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. For more information about painting and travel with Roger and Sarah Bansimer, visit paintingandtravel.com.